Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Coming out of SideQuest Studios, this is The Simpsons Index, episode 132. Hello out there, I'm your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me tonight is, here as always, except when he's not, BT Calloway. Yeah, don't forget my tagline, man, come on. (laughs) Well, I usually do you last, but I decided to leave our brand new guest for last introductions. Joining us tonight is Madison. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for joining us for The Simpsons Index. Thanks this is the podcast me. where we watch and review three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but there's a twist. Each episode must come from a different decade. Now, Madison, you're new to the podcast. What brings you here? Where's your Simpsons history? Where did the show begin for you? And where did it end? <laughs> uh, it all began on a nice sunny day on a Saturday. <laughs> I used to go to dancing quite mm-hmm. often. I don't know if you can tell. Don't answer that. I've um, not seen you dance, so I don't know. <laughs> And I'd be with my brothers and we'd watch Simpsons every Saturday before I had to go. Yep. And not still keeping up with the show now? Definitely not. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. We... Don't be. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, especially after the one we watched today, do you think you'll be deeping back into the series? Um, I'll get back to you on Does that. rekindle the passion for that sunny Saturday with your siblings? No, it's more mm. of a, a rainy Sunday now. <laughs> <laughs> now is the winter of this content. Yeah, man, new Simpsons, not even once. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let's hook into it. We just watched season 27, episode 14, Gal of Constant Sorrow. Oof. <laughs> First released in February of 2016, it was directed by Matthew Nastuck, written by Carolyn Omni. In- Omni. Omni. The Omni of a little bit of that. Anomaly of Omni. That was our tongue twister for her. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, we're weirdos, by the way, Madison. Uh, Welcome no. to the show. In this episode, Bart uh, ruins the shopping cart of a homeless woman named Hattie and sneaks her into the Simpsons' house and Lisa discovers this but discovers Hattie also has a musical talent and tries to promote her as a Appalachian folk singer-artist. Uh, yeah. And in the B story, Homer accidentally gets the cat stuck in the wall. Hey, what do we think? Oh, man, this is a slog. <laughs> this is just so flat. I was just bored for the whole thing until the end where I started getting angry. So we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, I didn't even have an expectation and, and I was still disappointed, to be honest. <laughs> Your expectation was set to zero. Yeah. And it's still, yeah. I'm in the minus now. <laughs> Yeah, I was just so nothing for the whole thing. Like, mm. there was a point where, I'm going to say, this is the moment of the story that stood out to me, for better or worse, when Hattie's in Lisa's room and they're talking about the Appalachian folk singer and all mm. that. And I realised, oh my God, I've just spaced out. <laughs> like, I did not really absorb any of this. This is so fucking unengaging and yep. boring. Yeah, it's just white noise for pretty much all of it until the white noise becomes a brown note yeah oh <laughs> and does it what and also like when they're on the docks and lisa first discovers her talent she's also mm-hmm. talking then and they're doing that simpsons thing of showing how boring the talking is by having something more interesting going on in the background mm-hmm. of the unicyclist that sets himself on fire yes gets carried away by unicycle ambulists <laughs> that's that's a new word. Ambulists? Unicyc ambulists. <laughs> Paramedics? Paramedics, whatever. <laughs> Although, para... What's that usually the prefix for? Like para- a, Parakeets? <laughs> like a paraglider or something. I'm just trying to fit, like, because uni means one. Yeah. So what, you got parakeet, you got paraglider. <laughs> Why are paramedics not flying? Mm. Answer me that, science. Come on. <laughs> get on it. Yeah. Well, they'll be able to get their job done a lot quicker, I that's know. for sure. And how about you, Madison? What's something that stands out to you from this episode, for better or worse? About the episode, yeah. More just the fact that I also kind of zoned out for the entire <laughs> thing. I think it was like a defense thing for me. Like, I yeah. just didn't want to face it. That's <laughs> what it's become. Just curled up into an intellectual ball and protected your head. Yeah. yeah. It's still Saturday. It's still Saturday. <laughs> it's still- <laughs> yeah. Still with the boys on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, and how about you, VT? What's something that stands out to you for better or worse? Well, I'm going to start from a place of negativity and we'll bloom from there because, you know, this is, uh, I'm from North, well, part of me, 49% from North Carolina. So that's uh, Appalachian Mountains. That's Tar oh. Heels. That's, that's my damn heritage right about there. <laughs> But no, they had to go and uh, appropriate my culture, goddamn, <laughs> with their folk music, and I thought I wouldn't get angry, which I didn't. But no, I will say the guest star vocalist, really good. 
Yeah. I don't know who she is. Mm, definitely. That's why they had four songs, because, you know, that was the only thing in this entire episode. I wrote down at one point, there's no conflict, there's no drama, there's no stakes. The only thing carrying this is the fact there's a good vocal star. Mm, so neither of you could pick the vocal performance of Hattie? Nah, I mean, it's not like Emmy Lou Harris or anything. Well, it was actually two people. Wow. So there was a talky Hattie. Now I've been cheated. <laughs> <laughs> there was a talky Hattie and there was a singy Hattie, which is very curious because the talking star was Kate McKinnon, who oh, okay. you might know from Saturday right. Night Live, and she's also been in a lot of comedies recently, Ghostbusters and... Would you call them comedies? Is that... <laughs> Ooh, Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Much like Saturday Night Live, it's advertised as a comedy, <laughs> so... <laughs> Technically classified as... Yeah, but, I mean, she's one of my favourites from that whole sort of group. Like, yeah, yes. I think she's a really dynamic and talented star. It's not much competition. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but also, she's a really good singer. So it did make me wonder why they got a separate singing star for this. Maybe they had booked her originally and didn't like uh, yeah. what she did with well, it. But what, what does Kate McKinnon tend to sing vocal like? Um, Who would she fit folk? Probably, I don't know. I don't know because I've only seen her sing in a couple of things. Like I remember when Trump got elected, and she, because she always did an impression of Hillary on Saturday Night Live, oh, yeah. and I think she sang Hallelujah, the Leonard Cohen, Rufus Wainwright. Hey. Everybody's covered that song. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so she is good, but she probably doesn't have that like, Ew, you know. <laughs> Whoa, that- <laughs> you're appropriating his culture just now. Yeah. <laughs> you too, man. <laughs> Goddamn Irish. <laughs> <laughs> fiddle dee But anyway, so the singing voice was Natalie Maines from the Dixie Chicks, the lead singer of the Dixie Chicks. All oh, right. Wow. Yeah. That hideous conglomeration known as the Dixie Chicks. <laughs> Fry <laughs> July. Woo! <laughs> oh, yes. And of course, this podcast coming out in Fry, uh, it coming out in July. Let's rename the uh, month of July to Fry. Yep. Um, <laughs> So, Madison, yeah, BT came up with the holiday mm. Fry July. Yeah, in response to everyone doing Dry July, it's uh, now Fry July where you just watch Futurama and talk about Philip J. Fry. Right. Yes. I mean, I'm not against it. <laughs> <laughs> and drink beer. Yes. <laughs> So I thought, I agree with you. Yeah, the vocal delivery with the singing was amazing, but mm-hmm. the songs were just kind of... Well, they were weird, almost parodies of folk songs, which was... Ah, like I spent the first two going, I know this song, what is this? And it's bugging the hell out of me. And the last two were uh, obviously Down to the River of the Prey and Big Rock Candy Mountain. Oh. But um, someone just clearly watched Oh Brother Where Art Thou before they wrote this. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't go for a, um, In Constant Sorrow All Through Ooh. His D. I mean, they went with titles, so. Yeah. Is that what the Soggy Bottom Boys were trying to be, an Appalachian band? Yeah. Ah. Huh. There we go. Yep. That's a really good movie. I it should is. rewatch that. It is a good movie. <laughs> Cohen Brothers. All right. Uh, moving on with the quest- questionnaire. Questionnaire, play count. Have you seen this episode before tonight? If so, how many times? Mess for God, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, I, I don't think it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> Just to reassure everybody, you know, in Australia it's difficult to get Simpsons episodes, but I assure you we acquire ours very legally. Wink. Ah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've seen it once before, but God damn, it's one of those experiences where I'm like, I know I've seen it before, but mm. it, nothing. Yeah, nothing's going to stay with you. Yeah. This is like when you get a brand new sponge and you've got to like work it in a couple of times before it starts <laughs> absorbing water properly. Like, and even then, this is wow. still a dry sponge. <laughs> the Simpsons, a dry sponge. Is that for dry July or? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the wackiness. Was this a particularly cartoony episode of The Simpsons? I mean, Homer's story kind of, but even then, not to the point of being unrealistic, just yeah. improbable, not impossible. Oh, wait, sorry. Homer is dead, by the way. The oh. fridge falls on him. <laughs> and then later on, he T-1000s through a metal bar. <laughs> so what's he made of now? Yeah. <laughs> He's a ghost, obviously. <laughs> Weren't you paying attention? Yeah, no, it, it all makes sense. It really does. <laughs> I was expecting them to like do some more you know, cartoony wackiness with that story. Even like yeah. when he shoved lasagna into the power socket, mm. I'm like, well, there's going to be an electrocution joke. And like, oh, yeah. There wasn't. No. no. I'm kind of disappointed. Un- unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go full Three Stooges with this, except it's just Homer and Homer and Homer. Yeah. Especially because yeah. we have like such a depressing story with Hattie, you know? Yeah. It would have given the episode some lev- levity that it needed. No, I'm sorry. I wasn't even depressed about <laughs> that. Would have been a feeling I had none. <laughs> but I mean, there was another bit of wackiness with Homer, where he's speaking the language of drunk with Hattie uh, later in the episode. 
That went too long. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was an okay-ish idea for a joke, but it didn't work. It didn't, went, went really long. Yeah. <sighs> and it's another one of these things where, yeah, the Simpsons doing the drag-out joke, the other characters are starting to look bored, and it's like... Oh, well, we. <laughs> yeah, it's just like dead time, pretty yeah. much. It's just yeah, for real. Yeah, and like that is such a good point with the Homer thing. It absolutely should have been because, especially when he gets the YouTube tutorial, you know. Mm. I'm looking for, like, some of these moments, like, why doesn't mine look like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, even well, just throwback, like... Yeah. You've almost got it when he's, like, he finishes the tile and goes, oh, it actually looks like the thing it's supposed to look like. He's just yeah. from that, you know, a whole... Uh, you know, why doesn't mine look like that bit? Uh, sorry, I did find a bit of wackiness. This is the thing. I forgot this even happened because it's so distant to everything else going on. When Bart has his whole, you know, rap moment of going into the $98 cent store oh, where he's no. making a dollar <laughs> off the hattie. Yeah. Again, it went on, on a bit too long, but it was a nice bit. But just the, the fact that I totally forgot that even happened yeah. says a lot about this one. And did you pick what song it was as well? I can't remember. Oh, I had to look it up because, yeah, this is definitely out of my wheelhouse. Man of Cons- Constant Sorrow, yo. <laughs> no? Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> um, no, it was... Uh, oh, I didn't even write down the title of the song. But anyway, it was Drake. Oh, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah. It was the Drake, which is another name for a duck. A duck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying he's a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Can you prove that Drake is not a duck? Yeah, I've never seen him and a duck in the same room at the same time. Hmm. Duck Grassy Junior High. Anyway, because um, that's where Drake yeah, goes. No, I just remember yeah. he was in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, for a second, I was about to give you the what the fuck are you talking about look. But... Yeah. So this is sort of another problem that I had with the episode that, yeah, it was originally about Bart being a, a landlord, yeah, and then it immediately pivoted to Lisa, you know, being a music manager. Mm. I just don't know why it wasn't Lisa music manager from the start. Yeah, like why couldn't it start with her hearing her on the pier, and then you know, oh wait, you live underneath the pier. That's bad. I'm going to take you home, and you can hide in my closet. Something just, yeah, that whole Bart misdirect was just padding, and it did nothing for us mm. at all. And in fact, even then, it was just weirdly paced. Like, he's going down the hill on the sled. He takes out Hattie's shopping cart and tent. But then the scene just ends. She's no, oh, what am I going to do now? And he's like, oh, well, I guess because I ruined your house, you can come live with us. There's nothing like that. It just stops. And then later on, he's it's just, why not have that information there? We kind of assumed it was going to happen. But why are you putting that onus on the audience to figure that out? No, everything was just of such little consequence Especially, like, immediately Lisa's onto Bart and we haven't had, like, a scene of Lisa, like, hearing noises from the closet or anything. It's just, I'm suspicious of Bart because the story's telling me to be. Because yeah. <laughs> she viewed him through a viewfinder on one of those coin-operated planes looking like a big shot and obviously he's up to no good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, transitioning into the heart of this episode, did you feel any emotion from this at all? Literally none! <laughs> Besides anger, is that, is that <laughs> counts? Count? Okay. Hmm. Usually we, we think about, like, uh, you know, character heart. No, oh, the thumps. My heart yeah. feels nice. No, I, Yeah, I didn't care for any of it. Uh, <laughs> like it's kind of sad. Yeah. Well, especially because, you know, they're trying to do a story about an addict, you know? Yeah. And, again, they just didn't build it up. It, it was just, yeah. she's an addict now because the story needed yeah, to, it was, to be. Yeah. She's an addict and ba 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 That's it. Drugs. That like, uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> But I think, what's the other one? Um, Laziest Gun in the West or something, where Bart pretty much does the mm. same thing. But then the thing with that is the guy's a recovering alcoholic who is so nervous about being back on camera, he starts to drink again. Yeah. That at least has, you know, some tread to it. Whereas this is, oh, by the way, I do used to do heroin. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> oh, okay. I literally wrote heroin. <laughs> how, how do you spell that? Uh, P-P-F-F-F-F-F-T-T-T. Right. Wait, what was the last letter again? T. Okay, yeah, got it. <laughs> the last letter or the second to last letter? Just go, go from start again. P-P-F-F-F-F-F-T-T-T. <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> yeah, it, it is very P-P-F-F-F-T. <laughs> that one more F. Oh, damn it. Were you not listening? <laughs> <laughs> again, like this episode, I'm kind of zoning out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's so disappointing, like, because a story about an addict or a struggling addict, like, needs some nuance and stuff, and they're also implying that she shot her parents, and... Yeah. What was with that? <laughs> just such a late addition. What? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that's that. 
That's it. That's everything. <laughs> yeah, right. there's nothing to say on that. <laughs> Pods of constant sorrow right Ooh. here. <laughs> <laughs> just, there's nothing to grab onto. She may have shot her parents. Waka waka. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, and also, like, Bart with the warning, she's going to disappoint you, and it's like, you were on her side just before. (laughs) He said he was making a dollar. Yeah, ah, yeah, that's true. (laughs) When he was a slumlord. Come to think of it, he also said she pays a week in advance, and then later on he's like, you're three weeks behind on rent. So she's been there for four (laughs) weeks. Yeah, that was kind of... The cat has been in the wall. Oh, my God. For four <laughs> weeks. I mean, sure, Homer's pushing food into the outlets. That lasagna but... would smell horrible by now. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of, lot of time problems here. Yeah, definitely. Also, no one noticed for four weeks that she was in the house. And especially Marge is pretending, oh, Homer, I noticed you were hiding the pets in the walls. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm smart. I'm Marge. She did nothing to help him. No. Yeah. <laughs> Just letting the poor animals suffer. <laughs> Yep. Marge is, is Marge. a bitch <laughs> And uh, not as observant as she thinks she is She no. didn't notice a woman that smells like radiator booze <laughs> Hiding in her children's, once again, children's <laughs> closets It's like, well I know where the dog and the cat are But what's happening with the kids? <laughs> eh, whatever. Yeah, whatever <laughs> Yeah, is she deaf to Appalachian folk music? Maybe <laughs> Ugh, weird. Ultimately, though, guys, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? This felt like morphine. <laughs> uh, kind of felt like a bunch of like bad shows chopped up and then put into one episode. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Like, okay, so we can agree the show did not feel like The Simpsons, but the character integrity, you know, was Lisa herself, was Bart himself. I mean, in integrity-wise, yeah, because Lisa would find hope in, you know, a, a tragic story of... Well, she, I can't, can't say she'd find hope in a tragic story of a musician, she doesn't know her story, but she would, you know, put the idea of her talent ahead of everything else. But it's just so weakly done, like... Yeah. She finds out this woman's really talented... And then takes it to Mr. Largo, of all people. You're like, oh, why? <laughs> like, he's the worst person to take anything to. And then he doesn't do anything <laughs> yeah. else. And they're like, oh, we'll put together this concert. It's like, okay. And then Lisa's all like, no, she's not going to perform. I'll go perform. It's like, but why? No one's there to see. No, no one's going to blame you if she doesn't show up. Yeah, the concert was <sighs> advertised as uh, Hattie Mc whatever her name is. I keep going to say Hattie McDougal, but that's a Futurama character. <laughs> Hashtag Fry July. <laughs> <laughs> She's the old woman who's um, uh, yeah. one of the other shareholders. I can jigger. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> My can jigger. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was that a watch my calling instead of a kajigger? <laughs> I move that we vote ag- against the cat hater, and my cat is pretty. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we could quote Futurama all night in absence of really anything could. quotable from this episode. <laughs> but yes or no, would you watch this one again? No. Not unless I wanted to fall asleep and not wake up for about 18 hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's a coma, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Mm, sweet, sweet coma. <laughs> BT, what would you like to change about this episode? Just give it a point or something. I don't even know where to begin on rebuilding this one because so many things are just... Like, there's no stakes, there's no conflict, there's no purpose for anything, so change any of that. I don't know specifics, because I just it's so numbing that I can't feel this one out. Mm-hmm. Um, blah. <laughs> Jeez, I got nothing, because it's, it needs so much work. And I'm not giving this away for free. <laughs> um, well, that's all. 131 <laughs> episodes of giving shit away for free. I know. I've, I've, we've written episodes. Um, <laughs> okay, have Lisa... I don't know, find something else out earlier so there's something to grab onto or Hattie tells her a story but it ends up being wrong and she finds it out some other way or something. Just Mm. anything. 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 How about you, Madison? What would you like to change about this episode? Uh, Good question. I'd probably like them to go along with Homer's little storyline a bit more. Like, I don't know not have it come up every like 15 minutes because <laughs> mm-hmm. like i'd forget that was even happening yeah. and then they'd come back to it and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> homer's a guy <laughs> no totally yeah oh, i absolutely agree with that um yeah it was at the point that he uh, how did you put it bt he t1000 through apollo yeah like, oh we haven't <laughs> yeah. been here in a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> as for what i'd like to change 
Like, if you're going to do a story about an addict, have some fucking nuance. Don't just make her an addict because you couldn't think of something better for her yeah, to do. You, they couldn't think of any other out for this. They're like, oh, ah, yeah. she's addicted to heroin and misses the concert because she's drunk. Because she's not shown any other signs of it beforehand. No. Whereas, yeah, like you said about the cowboy guy, he w- said he was a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. And, you know, that could even tie into why she's late on Bart's rent. Like, yeah. And he's curious about- Oh my God, uh, it's already already there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're looking up at a broken Ravensburg right now. What? It's a puzzle manufacturer. Okay. Oh. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Moving on. Cool All reference your, nerd. Yeah. All your puzzle making peeps out there. Nerds. <laughs> yeah, about three people liked that joke. Yeah. <laughs> Guest stars for the episode. Bob Boylan from NPR doing his very hey, NPR, NPR voice. voice. Yeah. yeah. As I'm a big fan of NPR voice, as mm. you know. That's a good voice to go to sleep to. Yeah, very <laughs> reassuring. Everything will be here when you wake up. Yeah. From your coma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did like Bart's point, actually. You know, why does everybody on this network sound like they're at a funeral? I can't and remember the punchline there. That was it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was one of those things where he was graffitiing the Ira Glass coffee mug yeah. and he wrote Ira ass. <laughs> yep. But Classic. classically funny. Got him. Yeah, hey. Oh, and leading into the other bit of Bart graffiti, which also leads into the other guest star of this episode, just getting those segues all nicely lined up and bragging about them. Uh, so Bart does a pointless El Barto graffiti on one of yeah. the Hattie posters and cleaning it up is Sideshow Bob. And they got Kelsey Grammer in for this one. Did he say anything? He goes... <laughs> Oh, great use of Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so also, BT, this is after the man who grew too much. Oh, right. <laughs> when he didn't get arrested in the end of the episode and now he has like mutant powers. Yeah. God. <laughs> Still angry. Yeah, this is an episode, Madison, where Sideshow Bob like mutates his genetics, and now he has gills. Yeah, he oh, also has super strength and some other stuff. He can uh, fly like a chicken. Which is not well, but still. Fly uh, like a chick. That's so specific. <laughs> yep. Uh, he also has grasshopper level and jumping let's not ability. Forget Python jaw. Oh yeah. He, <laughs> he like he gets Kearney's whole head in his mouth during that episode. It's quite a thing to watch. Uh, um, I think I'll pass on that one. It's the sound of me just <laughs> headbutting the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> BT, do you have any other notes? I kind of like when Homer's watching the YouTube video about how to fix things. It says, "Okay, we're gonna play loud music now, so you can curse." But again, it took too long to get to do anything with that. The whole episode really lacks ambient background sound. It's just, you know, mm. empty air conditioner sound. It's really weird mm. and really empty. Why do they do this in Modern Simpsons? It's not like ambient sound is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> just record outside the yeah, office. Like, pretty just... much. Yeah, we'll record some for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so is that one person copy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> yep, available now, $1.99, see? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the line where Hattie's like, oh, I used to live in a car and you get enough parking tickets, it's like curtains. Which is yeah. like, eh, but again, by then I'm so bleh that I don't care anymore. Uh, so Lisa just loves folk music now. That's that's always been part of her character. Absolutely. Yep. Has like four albums of... <laughs> yeah. And is like so into it, she knows one obscure musician and everyone he ever played with. It's like, surely just have a line about how she was got tired of jazz for a day and decided to learn everything about folk or something. There's something there. <laughs> Um, none of this matters. There's no journey, no conflict, but the guest star is good. Again, I almost like Mrs. Ornther, the other music teacher, who's like, and that's why I got back with my husband, but then we split up. Uh, your music sucks and your face is stupid. Yeah. It's about as good as that line got. I would have cut everything after the tuba thing. Yep. So then I have P P P F F F F F T T T. T T T? Yeah, okay. three, three, three T's. That's yep. <laughs> Add, added more T's during the uh, <laughs> podcast. Yep. And, uh, podcast titter. My <laughs> last note is just mild conflict, but no steaks. So it's like a vegetarian buffet. No <laughs> steaks. <laughs> How about you, Madison? Is there anything else you'd like to say about this episode? Uh, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did stop. Is it still playing for you? Because that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it. Yeah. That's okay. We'll move on to something that's a bit better than this. <laughs> just e- either, anything. <laughs> either better or worse, but this just blah. Yeah. All right. It's time for my final notes. Now Here it's time. Go. And now it's time for his final notes. Elliot's final notes. 
no alternate music this week? Well, first of all, that's reputation justified. And second of all, I'm not a bloody jukebox. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the opening joke of this episode was really foreboding of how boring and pointless and drawn out it was with the handy man thing. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that as well. That was such a thing for so long. <laughs> Well, uh, it's easy to forget about it because that was 50 years ago now. Wait a minute, Marge. Do you mean handyman or am I not a handyman? Oh, I'm Homer. Uh, <laughs> just pauses you could drive a truck through. Like handy man. <laughs> uh, so that for like three minutes. Yeah. And I will say, uh, just on Lisa pulling up the iPad thing, I did like, you know, the speediness of that. It sort of reminds me how far we've come. You know, there was that other Simpsons episode where the house was tilting. Yep. And Homer was watching, yeah, the instructional tape on how to fix that. (laughs) With Troy McClure. Yeah. (laughs) And now flanks the where. I don't remember what the words he says in that because it was purposely obscure. I didn't mind Homer's line, I'll paperweight you, and... You know, normally like, ah, oh, here we go, about to choke Bart yeah. again. But he actually paperweighted just, him. Just yeah. sat on him. Yeah. yeah. This big <laughs> caboose. Is that yep. a... Yep, you, that's you right. Bart. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, we put a but... little explicit tag on our yeah. iTunes feed. <laughs> so means you can go all the way up to ass. Ooh, <laughs> that's yeah. too far for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> this podcast yeah. is too hot for radio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have all, um, all the, what are they called? Synonyms for Bart. <laughs> like caboose. <laughs> And behind. And can. Ooh. And rear. <laughs> <laughs> and this episode of The Simpsons. Oh, yes. <laughs> we felt that burn all the way in the States. <laughs> <laughs> what was with the when she did her first song, all the black and white cards? Yeah, yeah it's maybe like a transition to like the Depression era when this Fayana music was uh, uplifting and understanding of the plight of the people. It did not work, because again, it just happened without context, and apparently I'm the only one in this room who got it, so... Yep. <laughs> That's my Appalachian heritage coming through there. Uh, we know hard times, but uh, we know good, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Glad you were on this one, especially. <laughs> our, our Appalachian um, correspondent. Oh, that's not your brain. This is a blood clot. Uh, fuck you. Um... <laughs> And in the post-credits thing, I did like a little thing where she's at rehab mm-hmm. and mows one of the orderlies and he's got a tunnel that goes to his bar. And yeah. this was meant to be a joke. Meant to be. It's time to rank this thing. On the Simpsons Index, we rank using our six-point scale, which starts down the bottom at failure. Maybe if the episode was just, meh, you give it participant. But for the positive rankings, you got, okay, bronze, good silver, excellent gold. But for the best of the very best, you give cubic zirconia. Now, I'm going to go first. Let me show you how it's done. I'm failing this one. I could have very easily participated it, given it a participant ranking, because it was just so flat and boring. Like, did we laugh once? No. Like, the, even going through the jokes, then I was like, oh, I kind of like that. It's just, but it didn't elicit any ha ha ha's. None. You know. Not even a chortle. <laughs> <laughs> even the ones I liked, I didn't even give a full up arrow to. It was just a diagonal up. It was a mostly <laughs> up. <laughs> just yeah. no effort. Like, yeah. it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so look, I'm giving it a failure because it absolutely bungles the ending. It undercuts any promise that this episode had with just the very convenient because we couldn't think of anything for the story Mm. turns. Nothing was built up. Nothing mattered. Fuck this episode, BT. Man, I'm... I don't think I hate it enough. I don't, it doesn't even elicit that much emotion from me. But a a participant still feels too good. (laughs) But a failure feels too severe. (laughs) I'm going to go with participant because that's where I was carrying the whole time. It's just, it's so painfully participant though. I'm going to stick with that. Yeah. But it's, yeah, because I, I had no laughs, but I had no real painful groans until the very end. But, uh, now I'm going to stick with a participant. This is just beige. Just so beige. All right. Uh, <laughs> and Madison, finish it off. Where would you like to go? Um, uh, Just a solid failure. <laughs> solid failure. Yeah. <laughs> Why a failure? As someone who has literally not like watched, I mean, a full episode of the new Simpsons, mm. it felt like a filler, even though I like don't know what has happened before, <laughs> what's to come, <laughs> and I don't care for what's to come. To be honest, like, doesn't uh, give you any hope for the no, future. That's it really kills sad. hope. My God. And like, I watch absolute garbage, <laughs> mm-hmm. so I'm shocked that I disliked it that much. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah, because yeah. garbage can be fun. Yeah, exactly. It's especially when it's like flaming garbage, you can keep yourself warm with the hatred. <laughs> 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 sure. <sighs> no, this is just blah. Yeah. All right. Well, that will average out into being a shiny failure. This will actually be the third shiny failure from season 27. (laughs) It'll be joining how Lisa got her Marge back, Mm. where Marge reveals she doesn't like jazz music. Uh... Yeah, that episode sucked. And also, (laughs) oh, you're going to love this, Madison. Teenage Mutant Milk Caused Hurdles. Teenage Mutant Milk Caused Hurdles. This is about when Bart and Lisa and Maggie go through early puberty. What the heck? Caused by milk. Ew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are things that happen. Lisa gets pimples, Bart gets a moustache, and Maggie gets a monobrow and super aggressive. <laughs> Ma- yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And the overall season ranking for season 27. Season 27 is currently ranking... As a participant overall season, there's a couple of good ones in there, but, you know, not a lot. Mm. So it's holding the same place, but it is now on par with 26. Ooh, who so, will win? Yeah, not a great season. Neither of them are. So Who would have thought they'd run out of ideas after 27 seasons? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now before we move on to the teens era, is that reputation justified? Is that reputation justified? Dennis Perkins of the AV Club. Dennis the Wildcard Perkins. He gave this episode a B+. This is, this is what we expect from Dennis. You just never know what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. So on the AV Club scale, we worked out B+, plus is like a silver maybe. Yeah. Mm. And he goes on to say, For all the griping about The Simpsons overstaying its welcome, it doesn't take much for the show to win back viewers' trust and affection. Dennis. <laughs> the, the characters and pieces are all in place. Dennis. Just waiting for the right tune to start moving in a semblance of their former hilarious harmony. De- Dennis, <laughs> do you need to talk to someone? <laughs> the Simpsons Index is here for you. Find us on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> and Instagram. At Simpsons Index. At Simpsons Index. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fuck this episode. Let's move on. Let's go to where The Simpsons, you know, looks a bit nicer. Let's go to the teens era where we are reviewing the parent rap. Do either the of you remember? rap. Yeah, not The Parent Trap. No. The <laughs> Lindsay Lohan movie based on yeah. another movie. Based on same. Lindsay Lohan's life, yeah. Yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, sorry, that was Herbie the Love Bug. <laughs> <laughs> Just from the title alone, can you guess which episode this one is? The Parent Rap. Does Marge become a rapper or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, is this one where Marge divorces Homer and marries 50 Cent? <laughs> Am I even making that up? It could be a thing. (laughs) Season 31. (laughs) Watch this space. All right, let's find out. We'll be back. Y'all come back now, you hear? Oh, shit, I wasn't recording. You liar, I can see it. And we are back, and we just watched our Teens Era episode. This was Season 13, Episode 2. Oh, wow, I didn't intend for that, because this is Episode 132 of the podcast, Season 13, Episode 2. I've already stopped caring. (laughs) Numbers! I care. I care. (laughs) Just got to send out those Illuminati messages through Mm. numbers. Don't out us. (laughs) (laughs) I don't make enough money to be a part of the Illuminati. <laughs> uh, this was The Parent Rap. First released in November of 01, it was directed by Mark Kirtland, written by George Meyer and Mike Scully. In this episode, Bart goes on a joyride in a cop car and to punish him, new judge in town, Constance Harm, sentences him to be tethered to Homer. And when that fails because Marge cuts the rope, she then puts Homer and Marge in stocks. Hey, what do we think? It was okay. I liked it. Yeah. 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 There's fun to be had in this episode. There was a yeah. plot. We actually laughed out loud. <laughs> yeah. I believe we call that lolling. <laughs> lolling. Never yeah. heard of it. Am I saying that right? No, I, th- I don't think it's a thing. I've, I've probably been misinformed. It mm. is now. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Zomga. Um, yeah, let's hook into this episode. BT, for better or worse, what's a moment that stands out to you from this episode? I like that Bart and Homer actually start off their punishment getting along. Like, it's yeah. not... They start off hating it, and then they kind of learn to live with each other. They actually start off seeing a lot of benefits, and then slowly start to get more and more annoyed with the little things. I think it's a really nice touch, and backwards to what I was kind of expecting, even though I've seen this episode before. Yeah. So I really like that flip in the dynamic. It made things work. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't need to, but they explained away Homer's little work thing with like, oh, he's just working nights now. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. 
And I also, I also quite like that when he tries to go into Moe's and Bart says, like, well, well, the kid can't be in here. And he's like, since when? It's like, thank you, because they could have just had Mo say, oh, he can't be in here because you're underage. But we're like, but we've seen him in there before. It yeah. happens all the time. Yeah. And yeah, and referencing a real world thing, ah, oh, the heat's been on ever since those Bush girls were in yeah, here. Yeah, you laughed at that. I've not read up on my uh, what the Bush has been doing post-administration. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, this was 2001. So yeah, Bush would have just gotten into power around this time. And, yeah, Clinton would have just gotten out of power, hence why he's their mailman now. (laughs) Because of creative punishments, yeah. Yeah. So the Bush daughters were... They they like to party. They like to drink and do drugs and stuff. My word. Yeah, I know. (laughs) (laughs) The president's daughters. God. (laughs) The human or something. Jeez. My my monocle just fell out. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, yeah, they got in trouble a couple of times, and especially because... One of the criticisms of Bush was like, because he was like a heavy coke user, yep. and yeah, he got like sober to be president. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for him. <laughs> How about you, Madison? What's a moment from this episode that stands out to you, for better or worse? I wouldn't say a moment, more of the like how they reassured that what a terrible person Homer Simpson is. <laughs> like, yeah, he, he's a bad father. <laughs> yeah, did kick his kids out of the car so he could chase a uh, radio prize van. Not even like. Moonhouse isn't his kid. He's just no. some <laughs> random kid. He's like, bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He definitely deserved part of the punishment in that. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As well, playing George Constant's harm. You know, we've met her on the index a few times yep. before. We do the episodes out of order, of course. So, yeah. But this is her origin story in this episode and played by Jane Cax Merrick, who you might remember as the mother from Malcolm in the Middle. I do remember uh... that. Yeah. Okay, it all makes sense now. Like, who, yeah. Like, who's that voice? I yeah. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't get Judge Judy to play a cartoonish version of themselves. <laughs> hmm, so who's the next best? <laughs> Actually, she says in this episode, don't spit on my cupcake and tell me it's frosting. Yeah, I gotta say, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, because do you know the real life book that Judge Judy wrote that oh. this quote is referencing? Well, I mean, I know the saying, don't piss it down my leg and tell me it's raining. Yeah, that was it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> They almost toned it down. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I can't like the other version. Yeah. Because I'm not going to be fooled by someone peeing on me. I, neither am I spit cupcake. Well, you know what? I'm going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on your leg. It's like you feel a wetness on your leg. You don't, like, like look up and go, huh, is it raining? You see someone standing next to you with their thing out, like, um, it, it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, you're like, is right. that me? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how about the punishments for Homer as well? Did you like how that played out? I, I agree with PT with the whole them bonding. Mm. And you, again, yeah. it, it shows that Homer knows nothing about his kids. Yeah. <laughs> Where he's like, oh, you skateboard. <laughs> That's his yes, entire personality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like Homer's negligence was charming at times, but I've got to say, when he was hitting up Marge for Nookie, like, oh my God, that was just so uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's a bit chilly, Bart. Maybe wrap your head in this blanket. He's like, mm, no. Yeah, you got to laugh at this, Judge. I was pressuring my wife into having sex in yeah. front of our son. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, yeah, a bit gross. And what stood out to me from this episode? My goodness. Yeah, actually, why Bart gets in trouble. I, I-, I like that setup, uh, the little joyride and stuff. Yeah, to be fair, it wasn't really even that he didn't mean to do it. It was an accident, damn it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. He was uh, he only bumped the thing into gear because he was threatened by Officer Sniffy. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't be? <laughs> such an adorable name for such a clearly aggressive dog. I don't know when they're all riding together and he does that. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> covers his eyes, a bit. you know. It's a misunderstood dog, you know. Yeah, just aggressive on the outside because that's what the job needs. You know, yeah. you got to have a presence on the streets. He yeah. does. He does have a job to do, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it was a nice little caper for them and lent to some very cute jokes, especially like, oh, the police hat with a rain guard. Yeah. That'll keep your head so dry. <laughs> I like that he wore it the entire time as yeah, well yeah. as they were going down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> and even then, Wiggum just in the donut shop, he just sucking the jelly out of his donut and then <laughs> refills it. it and weirdly enough, the, the woman who's just like, what? <laughs> that was actually really funny. I actually feel like that's a Simpsons ruined my brain moments where I quote the word what sometimes as that. In that exact cadence, yeah. What? <laughs> Play count. How many times before today have you seen this episode? I'm pretty sure at least maybe two times, but I didn't remember that much of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And how about you, BT? Exact same boat. Roughly two. Don't remember. Didn't remember details, but... Uh... Yeah. 
I think I've seen this maybe a dozen, maybe a... Just, just always got to win. <laughs> just a couple dozen times, no, yeah. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's what you'll learn over the course of this podcast. I've seen, seen The Simpsons and I've seen them a lot of times. <laughs> Except the new ones, I've only seen them generally two, three, maybe ten times each. Oh, yeah. You should start a podcast about it or something. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe a spreadsheet that's mm. online. Yeah. That'd be so helpful for deciding which episodes to yeah, watch. Yeah, and you can like rate them. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> got some good ideas, start making notes. This idea has legs. <laughs> like a motorcycle. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I've seen this a bunch. I like season 13. Generally, it's like... It's not the best, but I feel like this episode sort of is a nice medium point with it. You know, not that great of a story, but some solid jokes throughout. Yeah, yeah some fun. So let's talk about some of the fun. The wackiness. Was this a particularly cartoony episode? I would say so. Yeah, what were some of the far out cartoony moments that stood out to you guys? Um, uh, Marge says butthole. <laughs> <laughs> She's yeah. such a butthole. <laughs> so unexpected as well. And also the, you know, setup where people driving their cars past can spank bad parents. <laughs> well, that explains the sign. <laughs> such a good dumb joke. Yep. <laughs> Uh, in the start where there's a giant bowl of hot soup going across the road <laughs> and they swerve out of the way. Soup! Yeah. <laughs> and swerve straight into the meeting promising of promising... athletes. <laughs> or yeah. young athletes. Where they can buy trophies. Yeah. <laughs> what a lot of questionable bits, but they're just kind of one and done and you're out. Yeah. Yeah, and I like that as well. A car swerving through them and they're all doing acrobatics yeah. and getting out of the way. <laughs> flipping over the car. Yeah. It's mm. promising. Young athletes. <laughs> yeah, they got a bright future ahead of them. <laughs> if only they could afford some trophies. Yeah. <laughs> trophies don't come for free. Yeah. Um, also, the seal poncho is a bit wacky. <laughs> Not an item of clothing for a marine mammal. No, but the seal <laughs> named poncho. There we go. Mm. <laughs> I liked him as well, uh, making all the dog noises as well. <laughs> Good God, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the implication. Is that her dog as well, or is it just a seal that she knows? Mm, I'm going to say it's a seal she knows. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, they have an understanding. She throws it a fish every now and then. It, it stands yeah. guard. They, like, nod their heads yeah. to each yeah. other as they walk past in the morning. <laughs> Yeah. Get a newspaper, <laughs> yeah. wave. <laughs> yeah, they pick up each other's mail when they're yeah. out of town. You couldn't see it, but off screen, the seal actually had a boathouse as well. Oh, yeah. 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 It was number two ocean drive. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the idea of the seal getting her the morning paper, though. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> he got her mail again. Yeah. That's how they know each other. That's touching. Man, this is a good movie. <laughs> Put Meg Ryan in this. <laughs> Yeah, she did good as Constantine. You loved her in Sleepless in Seattle. You loved her even more in You've Got Mail. Now, Meg Ryan in Seal of Approval. Hey, nice. Ooh, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah. Hey, you co-wrote it. What are you about? <laughs> Your name's on it. You um, can't escape hey, it now. No, I'm anonymous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as well, the tether has an optic fibre projector <laughs> into it as well. Yeah. That was a bit... Mm, <laughs> Like, that's yeah. not how that happens, but screw it, I don't care. Hey, it's science. Yeah. <laughs> you just don't understand it. And by Spose. that point, we're having a good enough time that we don't care. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Mm. Well, I thought in that moment as well, it was weird that they were doing like a misdirect, like Marge was about to stab them mm. and mm. only to cut the tether. Like, I don't, I don't know. She got some mad knife skills because it's hard to just stab a tether and cut it in one go. Have so. you seen her arms? I know. I have to say. <laughs> Chopping food all day has made her just a weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and other wackiness, this is a uh, more implied wackiness. Is it possible for Marge mm. and Homer mm -hmm. to change out of their court clothes into their regular clothes, into their bed clothes, while in stocks? It's a good question. Uh, we're going to have to test it. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I brought one with yeah. me. Uh, oh. I was wondering why you had yeah. that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Scratch the floor a bit, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. They're yeah. heavy. I'm not, I don't yeah. have Marge's no, arms. No. <laughs> Because you couldn't, right? Though, because clothes. I mean... <laughs> they cut all their clothes. Yeah. Oh, God. They wasted just, so much. Though. I keep telling you, you need to invest in tearaway stripper clothes for this, <laughs> just in case this thing happens. Just you know? in case. You don't have to be a stripper. Yeah. It's just there are certain situations where you need tearaway clothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, now that's playing the stock market. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep, going to give you that what? Sorry. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Any other wacky notes that stood out to you guys? Well, I do have a mild Jordan's Hill Corner. Jordan's Hill Corner. Just quickly explain, we have a friend called Jordan who's very anally retentive, and so he has his own segment called Jordan's Hill Corner where we talk about things that are anally retentive. Anyway. I'm sorry, are you 
Are you saying anal? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He can be very nitpicky as well. Right. So even when he's not here, we like yeah, to make fun of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why not? <laughs> Hi, Jordan. The bit where they're trying to get their stocks off. Homer's trying to saw the stock off of Marge, but his stocks are suddenly all the way up to his shoulder, whereas previously they were at his wrists. Ah. Oh. Yes. They thought we wouldn't notice, but I did. <laughs> but also, yeah, the flame of a tiny little candle could also take <laughs> mm-hmm. one off. That's... That was a good misdirect, though. Uh, Flanders too busy thinking about the moral implications of helping yeah. Homer, and in the meantime, he's just, ha ha, you left an exposed flame, pink. Like, yep. Yeah. I did also like that, yeah, the bench saw was like their last resort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tried all those other tools. <laughs> to be fair, you'd have to, like, yeah, lie down while the bench saw got slowly closer and closer. <laughs> yeah. I want goggles, too. <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't a lot of Homer horribleness I'm forgiving in this episode because, <laughs> yeah, this was fun. So how about heart of this episode? Did you guys feel any babumps? Not big babumps, not really. What do you mean by babumps? You know. Ah, that's the sound your heart makes. Oh, right. I think. Mm. I haven't heard it in a while. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I mean, mine goes pating, but still. because <laughs> it's, it's tin. <laughs> Amazing what they can do with science these days. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Fiber optic projectors in tethers and, and tin can hearts. <laughs> Same company, by the way. Yeah. 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 Weird. It's fun you, fact. You, you gotta diversify in today's market. You never yeah. know what's gonna go belly up. Yeah. And, um, Fiber also, optics are on their way out, but tin can hearts up. Tearaway close as well. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> gotta get in on the ground floor with that. <laughs> Seems like yeah, the market's ready for it. A comeback. <laughs> Tearaway it never went away, man. Oh shit. <laughs> And never tore away. <laughs> Ooh, zing. Yeah, that's why we're riffing so much, because it's not really a lot of heart. It's also not really going for it, but you get a little bit with uh, Marge refusing to say she's a bad parent. Yeah. You know, that stand of... Um... Tut, tut, tut. Nah, I forgot the word. That. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the stand to refuse to give up your own moral ground, uh, sure. even when threatened with stocks and tethers. Yeah. Well, it's one of these things with this episode where, yeah, you're right when you're pointing out, like, there is, like, a real niceness between Homer and Bart finally getting along. Mm. But once Marge and Homer go into stocks, Bart's kind of dropped from the story and it's to its detriment, I reckon. Yeah, because there's a bit where Lisa's like, oh, I bet you feel bad, mom and dad are getting punished for this. It's like, it's a court order. What's he supposed to do? (laughs) Yeah. But he's also not feeling bad either. He's just sitting there watching a wedding and immediate fight between Bone Breaker and Rumbelina. <laughs> I mean, that marriage was always headed for trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Most wrestling marriages generally are. Yeah, they keep you know confusing their tearaway clothing. And, uh, <laughs> that just causes problems. <laughs> the business is thriving. <laughs> <laughs> Simpsons Index brought to you by tearaway clothing. <laughs> tearaway clothing when you need to change now. <laughs> Yeah, so I wish there was, like, some sort of conclusion to Bart and Homer's thing. Because, yeah, that was nice while it yeah. lasted. Yeah, if he had, like, a little plea to Bart of, you got to help us out, remember all the fun we had? He's like, well... Yeah. There was some to be mined from it, but, again, it wasn't necessarily the focus, so... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was more of a jokey joke episode. But ultimately, though, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Mm, yeah, no one's acting out of character. It's a little more absurd, but, yeah, but, hey, it justifies itself. Yep. Bit yeah. closer to the Simpsons you know and love. This is the Simpsons that I know and love. To the to warm Saturday yeah. mornings. These yeah. are. I'm feeling so cozy right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bit toasty to be honest. No. <laughs> yeah, I like this episode. Yeah. Yeah, because like I said, the story isn't like super classic Simpsons. It is mm. more of a joke factory, but those are very Simpsons jokes. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I like how they justify all these things. They don't suddenly make Judge Snyder be this suddenly, you know, cruel and unusual punishment guy. It's yeah. got this new judge. And yeah, and all these parts that are outside the norm have their reasons and they don't just do it. Like, think about other shitty episodes where, like, the one where they conclude it be like, oh, and there's a nightclub in Bart's room and that's how they finish this episode. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not even making that one up. Um, <laughs> Damn. Whereas everything here has its cause and its purpose. Yeah, it's a little more out there, but it's still justified in universe. Yeah, definitely. But yes or no, would you watch this one again? I would. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I had a good time. Yeah, I'd watch it again. And for episodes that we'd watch it again, you know, we like to think back to those Saturday mornings when we'd like do a Simpsons marathon, watch a bunch in a row. So we like to think in this question, the playlist question, what episodes would this pair well with? What are some thematic elements that this one shares? Themes. Add thematic elements with Thematic themes? Uh, How many podcasts have I ever done again? Fuck, I can't even say podcast. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's pronounced Pop Tart. All oh, right. <laughs> um, Constance Harm is an easy one. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, this is her first appearance and she comes up a lot in the teens era as like an alternative for Judge Snyder, which yep. is good because she can be the harsh judge and Snyder can be the boys will be boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Judge Snyder playlist as well. Yep, I do love the clown is down. <laughs> That's click through my head every now and then. Uh, yeah. Weird playlist, heroin. <laughs> I can't believe it. This is, yeah, the second episode that referenced heroin. That <laughs> Yeah, when Judge Harm is all like, oh, I'm surprised Bart isn't robbing banks and chasing Sweet Lady H. Oh, mm. yeah, yeah, I didn't yes. know that was a nickname. Oh, man, you got to learn to talk straight. <laughs> Sorry. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you all knew all the nicknames for butts, but not for heroin. <laughs> yeah, Lady H means heroin and horse means a horse. <laughs> oh, how yep. do you spell it? No. <laughs> pee pee. <laughs> pee pee. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what other episodes would pair well with this one? I'm assuming guest appearances by Frank Welker. Was he the seal? I uh, wasn't. I didn't turn up in the notes. <gasps> Gasp. Although I am looking at my guest stars for this one and it said Charlton Heston. When was Charlton Heston in this episode? I don't know who that is. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, he played Moses. He was head of the NRA for a long time. Uh, he died and he's in hell now. Oh, <laughs> fun. Yeah. I'm just going to make sure that I wasn't like confusing episodes because I was deciding. I feel like you have to be. I can't. I don't even remember a reference to him. Yeah. But I could be an idiot. Sorry. <laughs> oh, wait. Was he the lead singer of Blue Oyster Cult? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. Although, question. Yeah. Besides the seasons, what else doesn't fear the Reaper? <laughs> <laughs> the wind or the sun or the rain? Yeah, there and we, we can go. be like they are. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, no. Okay, so I think Wikipedia fucked that one up. So it wasn't Franco, uh, Frank, Frank Welker. It wasn't Frank Welker. Uh, I'm looking at that. Just, and... just take a breath. Huh? <laughs> it wasn't Frank Welker voicing Poncho. I kept going to say Frank Welker. <laughs> it was Jess Harnell. Do you guys know who Jess Harnell is? No. Should I? Yes. Okay. Because you've definitely heard his voice work. He's one of those guys that you look on Wikipedia and you're like, fuck, <laughs> that is a career. But uh, most notably, and for our panel, he plays Wacko in the Animaniacs. Ah, I know this guy. He's yeah. got a show. It's good. Oh, really? <laughs> Talking Tunes. Oh, really? Where he uh, gets other voice actors on and they read scripts in their famous character voices. Nope, that's Rob Paulson. And he also plays Crash Bandicoot in the original games. <laughs> So he gets hit by crates well. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he knows how to do animals getting hit by things. Mm. Is he well. the... Wow! Yeah. <laughs> that, that was horrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was a good Crash Bandicoot impression. Uh, I know who you're being, so... <laughs> That's good enough. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. So I'll go in and edit that on Wikipedia, because, yeah, I don't remember Charlton Heston being in this. No. I mean... uh, other playlists would be Mole Man's Immortality. Ah, yes. We get another Mole Man death. Well, well, no, he gets up at the end. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I like how they didn't leave it ambiguous as well. He mm. totally gets run over. Yeah. He should have died. Yep, but he didn't because Mole Man is forever. Yeah, that's inspiring. right. Mm. <laughs> Very inspiring. Yeah, he can go through rampant alcoholism and a football yep. in the groin. Yep, and... drill to the head. Oh, oh no, my brains. <laughs> He's been buried alive. He's been <laughs> run over by cars. He's been set on fire by the sun and just goes, oh, rats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the immortal mole man. <laughs> BT, what would you change about this episode? All right, there's a bit where to report for their cruel and unusual punishment, they go to room five. That really should have been room 101 as a reference to 1984. Oh, the end. That's, that's my <laughs> notes on things I want to change. Um, no, that's one of those ones where I'm sure there's room for improvement, but everything works well enough that I don't have an immediate standout for that. So, yeah, I think maybe have Bart just be a bigger part of this second half because the second half is really kind of where the lag is. But that would be a boot it. And how about you, Madison? What would you like to change? Uh, I don't think I would change anything about it. It's just, it's not an episode that I would go out of my way to watch. Like, if it was on TV, I'd mm. sit and watch it, but... Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Not a big opinion on this one. Yeah, no, nice. and honestly, that's sort of, at times, the best you can expect from the teens <laughs> era. <laughs> it didn't make me furious. <laughs> mm. Yeah, what I'd change about this episode, oh my goodness. 
man, I really love the joyride scene. I kind of wish there was just a little bit more to it. Yeah. Like, just three more jokes, maybe? I mean, they were in a runaway car, and they didn't pass someone moving a pane of glass across the road. <laughs> yeah. So, it was I a mean, giant bowl of soup. Like, yeah, what more pretty... can you ask for? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was probably like their punch-up in the writer's room. No, we've done the pane of glass. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. like the opposite of that? Soup! Soup. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you want for lunch? <gasps> Ding! Of course! <laughs> glass! <laughs> of course! Fire. <laughs> no kickboxing. <laughs> yeah, I want Bart to be more involved with the solution because, yeah, he was dropped from the story and his coming around at the end was at odds with his apathy while yep. he was watching wrestling. And I think his apathy could have been a bit more motivated by the fact that Homer was starting to be a bit of a dick in the mm. tethering thing. I, and I feel like more of the point should have been Bart feels like he's being punished having to live with Homer mm -hmm. and Homer's the one that was meant to be getting punished as well and he doesn't seem to be suffering as much even though Bart did make him run it's true <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say Bart's got some strength you know he's yeah pulling a fully grown man who's dragging through the dirt and glass yeah yeah even <laughs> if that was like the average father weight that would have still been an impressive feat yep. <laughs> and through glass <laughs> oh my god another playlist fucking uh, gro uh weird gross up close-ups on uh, weird gross close-ups on Homer gross up close-ups I like <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was like did I say that wrong does that make yeah. not sense yeah, whatever. Let's go with it. Sounds like a kid's TV show, like Blue's Clues and then Gross Up Close Ups. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Gross Up Close Ups are like in Nickelodeon, like in yeah, SpongeBob, SpongeBob or, or Ren and Stimpy. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. when he just looks like a normal cartoon yellow sponge and then they do like that close up when he's got, uh, what do they call it? It's like SpongeBob's equivalent of the flu. God damn it. The suds. Oh. Sorry. I love SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Madison, do you have any other notes? Uh. <laughs> It brought me back to the sunny days, not going to mm -hmm. lie. Was, mm -hmm. This is why we do the bad ones first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling much better now, mood-wise. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, BT? Any other notes? You abandoned your son for $40 and a blue oyster cult medallion. <laughs> <laughs> if I may quote, don't fear the reaper. <laughs> We're all familiar with BOZ. <laughs> and finally, and I can't believe I haven't talked about this yet, ah, cobras. <laughs> <laughs> Good old night terrors. <laughs> Uh, this is a joke I feel like I should hate, but I can't. <laughs> There's something just so just joyous about the delivery that's just yeah. panicked, but it, like terrified, but in an adorable way. <laughs> I don't know how that works. It, it did. Ah, cobras. <laughs> so good. It's time for my final notes. Now it's time. Right, I've already done this. Fuck. <laughs> you only get one. <laughs> I love when Bart and Milhouse pull over Flanders. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drop your pants. But my hands are up. Hula out of them. <laughs> <laughs> he even sings a little bit of Muckle Muckle <laughs> I mean, <laughs> They said hula, so. Yeah. He's got a... <laughs> I do love the scene in the courtroom when the Simpsons arrive, and it's just such a casual thing for them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just saying hello to all the regulars. And yeah. All the <laughs> hey, Carrie. Hey, Lisa. Hey, there's no <laughs> shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even Homer just like, okay, let's get the routine over with. Come on, Roy, while we're young. I'll pull the car around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just love the familiarity with that. And I love Homer, like, when him and Bart bump heads as they're eating ice cream. I know, that, that looked brutal. <laughs> yeah. It went straight down. Yeah. He's <laughs> kind of impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, as well as hitting his head, he would have had a massive ice cream headache from mm. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And just the pouty little child as he walks in, but I hit my head, yeah. Mo. <laughs> Mo just knows immediately what to yeah. do. <laughs> this has happened before, yeah. clearly. Outside, like right outside where it happened. Yeah. <laughs> I think Mo might have even set up that pole. <laughs> just for more business. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he needs it because he has to rob now, apparently. To be fair, uh -huh. it was $600 pants. Yeah. <laughs> Would you not? <laughs> if I wanted a cock and bull story, I'd read Hemingway. Yeah, so I've not read all of them, but there is one about a bullfighter or a bull or something, and there's probably cock there somewhere. Whether chicken or penis, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Marge's hairstyle playlist. Hey, Marge, surf's up. Oh, and I love the misdirect of, um, oh, if the costume store knew we were using these burglar <laughs> outfits for burglary, <laughs> they'd be so upset. I did like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to rank this thing. Madison, your turn to go first. I'd rank it probably bronze. That's the middle, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the beginning of... That's, that's the okay rank. Yeah. Yeah. 
I liked it. I didn't love it, mm. but also I didn't not like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the inner word definition is okay. Mm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, how do you spell that? <laughs> P P. <-P> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. Ooh, felt like I was on a bronze, but maybe a bit higher. I did like a lot of jokes. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna give it a silver, which on our ranking is good. I had a good time with it. Even though the story was kind of a bit of a letdown, but also I was having funny times. So, yeah, it's definitely not excellent. So, silver, good BT. Uh, I'm just going to straight out bronze. I had a good enough time, but it could have had a better time. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Good, okay. good, good, not, good. Not good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two okays and a good. Mm hmm. Okie okay, okie, okay, good. Yep. All right. <laughs> well, that'll equal a shiny bronze. And this will be the fourth episode from season 13 to get a shiny bronze. Mm, out of how many? Uh, seven, eight. Okay. So, yes, other shiny bronzes from season 13. Sweets and Sour Marge, mm -hmm. when Marge bans sugar across Springfield. Yeah, mixed feelings. Yeah. The Bart Wants What It Wants, which I didn't like. <laughs> which one was that? <laughs> Where he dates Renya Wolfcastle's daughter. I think that got a pass, because isn't that the one that has the line of, uh, we play Uno, I chase with hoes, no biggie. <laughs> yeah, even though I didn't like that episode, that line still kills me. <laughs> and The Old Man and the Key, which we reviewed with Jordan a few episodes ago, that's the one where the famous uh, Old Man Yells at Cloud meme comes oh, from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Grandpa chases the Zelda yeah. out yep. to Bronson, Missouri? That's Branson, Missouri. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they accidentally go to Bronson. All right, and yeah, that means season 13 is holding very strong as, coincidentally, our 13th best season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's this weird little run where 13, 14, 15 are our 13th, 14th, and 15th best seasons. Wow, way to know that place. <laughs> it's, it's easy to remember when they're the same number, not like... But six, which is number one, isn't it? Six is one, five is two, seven is three. <laughs> <laughs> That's counting, kids. <laughs> one is ten, and ten is nine. You lost me. <laughs> so, yeah, overall a shiny bronze season. All right, guys, that about does it for the teens era now. Now it's time for the classic. Madison, you have gone through the terrible first hurdle, <laughs> the okay, okay. second hurdle. Yeah. <laughs> and now let's go back to the classic of the classic era. We're going to season three's Mr. Lisa Goes to Washington. Do you know which episode this is just based on title alone? I think so. Is that the one where they're like on an excursion? No, never mind. Mm. <laughs> we shall see. Oh, I think I understand. And we are back, and we just watched our classic and final episode for the evening. This was Season 3, Episode 2, Mr. Lisa Goes to Washington. And of course, that's a play on Ernest Goes to Camp, I believe. Mm hmm First released in September of 1991, it was directed by Wes Archer, written by George Meyer. In this episode, this is the one where Mr. Lisa goes to Washington. No, the, the, she enters a writing essay contest about how great America is, but she gets to Washington and finds out maybe it isn't so great. Hey, what do we think? I think the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. <laughs> yeah, good call. It's going to be uh, reminding us all, and especially our American listeners, of that fact as we go through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this was a very indicative of first three season mm. Simpsons. Like, a lot more of a slow burn on this one. Definitely. Yep. <laughs> yeah. A lot more story, a lot more... Not, not quite heart, more brains in this one. But... Yeah, they really wanted to make this full of thinky stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. full of morals yeah. and integrity. Yeah. It's but... not what I'm about at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like they had, like, obligatory Homer doofiness at the start just to fill that quota, but, yeah, yeah. this was very much a not Homer doofiness episode. But it is kind of a fun escalation. He just gets so into what is effectively a Reader's Digest magazine that uh, it balloons into an essay contest somehow and feels totally natural doing it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, it's weird how much love they show for fucking Reader's Digest <laughs> in this. But they went the effort to change the name slightly. Yeah, yeah. Even though you don't want to get sued. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they said too many nice things about it. Yeah. <laughs> they should have been more eternally vigilant. <laughs> they know what the good version of slander is, but that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Madison... Panda. For... Pandering. Panda. Yeah. <laughs> slander and panda. That sounds like a Nickelodeon cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of shows today. 
So, Madison, what's a moment from this episode that stands out to you? I can't get the piano guy out of my head, honestly. <laughs> like, the way he would walk off stage every time as well. It was like a yeah. little dance wave kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. Was... Very jaunty dude. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I don't know anything of what he was saying because, yeah, it's all that <laughs> politics and trade stuff that just One flows was the deficit my gap, the other was the trading gap. Oh, right, yeah. Well, you understand ragtime, at least. I do. Yeah. Yeah, so this was actually based on a real-life dude. His name is Mark Russell. I did not research any of his music <laughs> leading up to this because the jokes that this and 30 Rock have made about him just make him sound fucking intolerable. <laughs> I'm sure people who know politics love him. Yeah. Ha, that's so us. <laughs> yeah. I'm a fan of parody music and everything. Like, I mean, I have two Weird Al action figures in my... <laughs> yeah, but on subject matters, you understand, like food. <laughs> That's Weird Al's, you know, bread and butter. Yeah. Pun intended. <laughs> well done. That was a 10. <laughs> yeah. All right, how about you, BT? For better or worse, what something stands out to you from this episode? Come on, the Lincoln Memorial being too busy, so he goes to the Jefferson Memorial, he's all, like, sad. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a serious moment. It's so <laughs> funny. Like, Wait, don't leave. Come back. <laughs> I'm get so lonely. <laughs> Oh, I did nothing. Just the Declaration of Independence, the Louisiana Purchase, and the dumb waiter. Yeah, and he had that great rap battle with Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton fans, yeah. <laughs> Which one was he in? Oh, he. Um, and I'm back. Fuck, what was that song? Ah, I've been away for so, so long. long. Tell me what did I miss? Just tell me what did I miss? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and the rap battles. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> so that's some politics content that I can get behind. Yeah. Anything by Lin Manuel Miranda. If mm -hmm. you'd like to be on the show, Lin Manuel, <laughs> throwing it out there. Yeah, who knows? Fuck, he's probably due to do a Simpsons episode soon. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like you said, they're pretty sure they're going to do a Hermiton parody at some point. You've said that. You've said that before. That's your part, not mine. No, I felt like I read that in Wikipedia that yeah, they were going to do oh. something like that. You made a prediction on this show. I'm pretty sure. Did I? Yeah, <laughs> I remember your life. <laughs> If only I like recorded parts of it and put it out into the world, then I might remember it better. Or which of one of literally hundred episodes it could be on. <laughs> yeah, following on from that, I'm going to say, yeah, what stood out to me is the pretty cool turn in this episode where, yeah, Lisa was demonstrating her intelligence with, you know, a really thoughtful, uh, well, what's the word? Well worded, but like... Uh, Full of a lot of, a lot of that good word power. Patriotism? <laughs> Schmaltz? Yeah. <laughs> Cheese. But then, yeah, that intelligence was then shown to be a double-edged sword as she yes. couldn't ignore the mm. fallacies of... It's almost like the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. <laughs> <laughs> Headline of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, yeah, this episode was kind of lacking in the laughs because of that. It was. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not, not too sure where my rank is at the moment. <laughs> oh, I, I figured it out. <laughs> of course you would. Well, I figured out mine. I can't, I can't tell you how to rank. But yeah. No, you can't. <laughs> but there's a lot of things that I theoretically like love about this episode because especially in this era, we didn't get many Lisa episodes. Mm. And much like a lot of Lisa episodes, yeah, this one's very thoughtful and considerate. So that's nice. And it's a great way to have her intelligence without it being like a... Her being too intelligent for her own good or, you know, stepping beyond bounds that an eight-year-old would physically be able to do. Yeah. Oh, they definitely. Do sometimes. And I do love how the judges of the initial essay contest are like, hmm, me thinks I smell the stinky stench <laughs> of daddy. And <laughs> It's just not. It's no. <laughs> but it's such a good scene. Just Again, it's sort of half background, but it's just like, uh, do you have interest in politics? I don't know. Do you have interest in anything? Yeah. Could you... Touch your nose for me? <laughs> <laughs> After talking with your father, I've decided to give you five additional points. <laughs> Very good. Play count. Have you seen this episode before today? If so, how many times do you reckon? I know that I've seen it before because I knew how it was going to end, mm. but I don't remember watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, enough to write a 300-word essay on it, which while yeah. we're on the subject, 300 words, pff, come <laughs> on. <laughs> while I'm asleep, maybe. But when you were eight. <laughs> I mean, I suppose. How many pages is 300 words, do you reckon? Not even a page. Like an A4 bit of paper. A4 paper on 12-point font is roughly 1,000. Oh, really? Well, probably a little bit under 1,000, maybe 800, but still. Yeah, it's probably why they blitz through those essays so quickly. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. And I just loved 
the I did love the montage of like the tacky types of essays that you'd get, yeah. like the one that was the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Take two scoops of democracy and mix it with five sugars of fuck. I don't know. <laughs> two spoons of liberty. Yeah, and okay. checks and balances. And oh my god, shut up! Get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and I did love how what one kid mentioned. I have a yellow belly. I am the American non-voter. You all have yellow bellies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that weird thing where yellow sometimes... Is, like It's like when they refer to themselves as being white. It's like, yeah. but you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you have jaundice. <laughs> Extreme jaundice. Yeah. Wackiness. What were the wacky things from this episode? All right. Well, there's got to be something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it counts as wacky, but I like how the guy trying to make the bribe has an artist renditioning of what the forest looks like now and it's like oh all these animals are so sad they're crushed by logs whereas they could be having tea parties on the stumps <laughs> yeah <laughs> just the idea is. that he went out got a concept artist to draw out a hump <laughs> it was mm. like oh look at look, 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 look at this maybe he drew it himself i mean yeah, yeah. don't could, take that could away be from an him. aspiring artist yeah. like, this is what he really wanted to do but no now he's a lobbyist yeah it's just, it's you a think he story. wants to make bribes for a living <laughs> <laughs> no one does <laughs> yeah he gets in entangled in this political scandal is like, I just wanted to draw cute little animals <laughs> how did it come to this well that's an interesting story Billy oh I know what happened okay so the FBI because then they had an artist rendering of like drilling oil in uh, Teddy mm-hmm. Roosevelt's head and that was a sting so they were like we're gonna give you time off if you can draw this up for us <laughs> you don't have time you're either in or you're out yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it so just on that as well there were some real life repercussions from this bit. Interesting. Where the timber lobby of America made some like public statements against the Simpsons and say, they're making us out to be bad, but we're not bad. We're hardworking Americans and the Simpsons are making fun of us. Wow. <laughs> Lumberjacks, total pussies, who thought? <laughs> Never know. I, I just I couldn't believe that when yeah. I read it. Like because it's very clearly like just this one lobbyist who's pushing to log an entire forest. Yeah. And not meant to be at all in the slightest the industry itself. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all there on Wikipedia. There's too much to go into. Like, there is actually too much to go into <laughs> now because they had a couple of back and forth with The Simpsons where they were like, come on, <laughs> you guys are cutting down trees. Like, don't attempt to take the moral high ground. <laughs> They're like, oh, I suppose all these comics are drawn on what, stones? No, it's paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Other wackiness. Um... <laughs> well, in terms of cartoony moments, how about the visual of the cats and pigs all through Washington? I love that. It kind of changes like a political cartoon visual style. Yeah, on board. Yeah. All the pigs eating cash out of the trough and <laughs> yeah. Wipe what would you mouth prefer they? Flag. Yeah. What would you prefer they eat out of well, Elliot? <laughs> Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So stylistically, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, looks amazing, and it's a great shift. And yeah, it's something I didn't get until this viewing, which I'm a little bit older, a little bit wiser. I've now read some political cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I got them as well. Yeah. Uh, the highly unpopular seventy-five cent piece. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's like intellectual wacky. Yeah. Again, another thing that was based on a real world thing where they had Susan B. Anthony coins. Like, they weren't 75% yeah. cent or whatever, but yeah, they were unpopular because sexism. Yeah. Just, or Sacagawea dollars where, yeah. you know, I don't think it was sexism, they just didn't like coinage for mm. some reason. Yeah. They got weird. Well, yeah, they sizes. don't. Yeah. It's so annoying in America where your wallet just like expands from all the fucking dollar bills and. Yep. But hey, that's the price of having strippers around. <laughs> Can't put coins in a in a G string. Nope. <laughs> is that is there a law against that? Can we confirm that? It's it's not illegal. Can't confirm or deny. <laughs> I do know the only reason the penny exists is because they're made from copper and the copper lobbyists actually continue to press uh, the government to make sure they stay in circulation, even though pennies actually cost more to make than they're yeah. actually worth. So uh, everything is fucked, and the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. (laughs) And the price of a penny is more than a penny. Yeah. (laughs) Weird world. So yeah, not too much to talk about with the cartooniness, unfortunately. But how about the heart of this episode? Did you guys feel emotions? I mean, a little girl was losing faith in democracy. Good (laughs) God. (laughs) Yeah. It broke my heart seeing Lisa cry like that. Yeah. Tearing up a wrestling. Yeah, that's a real good second act button. 
<laughs> yeah, and I think it's so unexpected as well as, you know, well, okay, left field, hello. Yeah, especially because, yeah, Lace has just got this blind, verbose faith in democracy up until this point. Mm-hmm. And this is where it shatters her to her very core. It's nice seeing the family rally around her as well. Instead of her being the outlier, it's yeah. they're, they're all together, they're unified. Yeah, even Bart's being weirdly supportive. Even. Yeah, what's with that? <laughs> yeah, even though the fucking ragtime dude is really pushing his limits. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, there's a great moment of, Mom, he is awful. I know, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> <Just sit still. laughs> oh, I do like Bart's little bit of uh, reverse psychology. It's like, well, which bed do you want? That one? Oh, oh okay, you want that one. Well, you have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> I argue that it's not reverse psychology because it's not like he's getting the bed that he wants. He's just being a fucking jerk. Yeah, it's true, staying true. true to what brothers are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're the youngest as I'm well? very much the youngest. <laughs> Aha, youngest unite. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, trio of youngest right here. Nice. Fuck you older siblings yeah. for all those things. Phil <laughs> listens to this and he's a guest. So. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he did. <laughs> But, yeah, I like to think, uh, yeah, the hidden scene was like, okay, okay, calm down, calm down. How about we play a prank on Dad instead? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, the 2 a.m. wake up call. Mm-hmm. Oh, those kids are going to be so tired the next day. It's a risk they take. Although this family spent <laughs> sense of timing is ridiculous because there's Lisa wakes everyone up when it's three hours for the contest and then they still have time for Bart to get a massage and Homer to join him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if the contest is downstairs, maybe. But, uh, you know, seem to be cutting that pretty fine. Yeah, and they're really squeezing the Reader's Digest for all they're worth. <laughs> what I do like is all the placards outside the White House that say, everything's fine and things are good. <laughs> all the protesters, yeah. Anti-protesters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never see protesters in times of good. <laughs> good job. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want the placard now. It's just like, things are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we won't We'd... be able to use it anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, but... <laughs> maybe not. Ah, <laughs> political content from us. <laughs> ah. <too>. <laughs> you know what I would like my placard to say? Mm. The price of freedom is eternal vigilance. <laughs> of course. Just, uh, <laughs> driving that one her Release the Miller Report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, though, guys, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? I mean, it's the early seasons kind of symptom. Well, not symptom. Where they kind of figure out who they are exactly. And so they go for this more aspirational episode, which is all about the thoughts rather than the feels or the ha-has. Yeah. And yeah, it's a different kind of Simpsons, but yeah, it still feels everyone is on point. It all makes sense. It all works really well. We go from Homer being obsessed over Reader's Digest to exposing a political criminal and it's seamless. Mm. So yeah, nicely done. Yeah. And does this remind you of the the Simpsons on a Saturday morning? I reckon it's more of like a very very early morning, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where the sun's still coming up. Yep, it's a bit cold, but you get that morning like the sun coming in through the window and you're warming your feet up. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what the feeling is. Yeah, and at first you're like, oh, I got up early for this, and then later mm. on in your life you're like. I know now the price of freedom is eternal vigilance, (laughs) and I've learned that. It's in my heart. (laughs) And yes or no, would you watch this one again? Yeah, if I understood more politics, like (laughs) more American politics, then yeah, yeah, definitely, I think I'd enjoy it more. Yeah. I kind of don't want to know as much as I already do. It's terrible. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, absolutely, I'll watch this again. Yeah, I might watch it again. I honestly feel like I may have seen this one enough for a lifetime now. (laughs) That's fair, because I feel like I've got everything I'm going to get out of it. Especially, yeah, because it's that effect of... Wasn't a favourite one when I was a kid. I appreciate a little bit more now, but it's still no Mr. Plough War. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a question, though. What does the I stand for? <laughs> In. In. Okay. And the V? Vape. <laughs> and uh, the P? Here we go. <laughs> uh, 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 parishes. <laughs> so I'm supposed to vape in parishes. Yeah. All right, thanks for clearing that up. I <laughs> know what my pass is for. <laughs> you just enforce them. Yeah. And I love how Homer actually in that scene asks the letters, yeah, in the order of I-V-P-I. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, yeah, might watch this again. We could put this in a playlist. What playlist would this go in? Shoehorns. I just saw it, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to shoehorn that in. <clears throat> well, actually, that could go in the thing goes up, thing goes down playlist. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> nice. Shoe nice. goes in, shoe goes out. Bed, bed goes, goes up, bed, bed goes, goes down. down. Cloud goes up, cloud goes down. Political episodes. Yep. Like the one with Sideshow Bob and Mare. And, I know oh. the last one had a seal, but a uh, sea lion playlist. I'm sure they show up again. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Marine life playlists. <laughs> Didn't see any heroin in this one, though. Unfortunately. I mean, it's in the background. It is Washington. <laughs> oh. <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> Take that, swamp. 
<laughs> BT, what would you like to change? Ooh, I would make it funnier. But again, that feels like that's not the point, so I don't want to criticize the episode for that because that's not what it's going for. I would make this required viewing for everyone going into the U.S. Senate. <laughs> nice. Like, they have to write a 300-word essay on why the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Interesting. Yes. Madison, what would you like to change? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think there is much that I would like to change about it. Again, like, it's, that's what it was. Yeah. It wasn't trying to be funny. It was still being a Simpsons episode, but it was, like, political. Like, hey, guys, look at this. Wake up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and as for me, I... There's a lot of that fucking Reader's, Reader's Digest that you could just snip. Like, <laughs> I think it's good because it does give Homer a lot to do in the start of the episode, and he's, you know, Captain Wacky. He's the mm. funny member. And seeing him getting into Reader's Digest and also, like, getting very snarky and arrogant, mm. like, within days. Yeah, uh, immediately. Look at those kids wasting their life in front of that TV idiot box. <laughs> After he's just ripped oh. his pocket. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Would it kill them to read something? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the, the smoker that's been off for three days and it's like immediately, oh, I used to smoke the cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> but because of that, I think that levity needed to be peppered all throughout the rest of the episode, mm -hmm. not just so front loaded because... Yeah, Acts 2 and 3 really do feel like they like slow to a crawl because of that. And Yeah, it needs a lot more jokes. Yeah, it almost feels like a very special episode where we learn about politics. More <laughs> fucking real, and we learn that the price of freedom <laughs> is eternal vigilance. Hey, is that, yeah. Am I getting it right? <laughs> yep. Yeah, absolutely are. Nice. I think maybe that's my only problem with this, is that everything works out perfectly. Okay. As in, you know, Lisa exposes this guy and he's arrested within a matter of hours. And I think that's meant to be a comment on how fast... Slow it normally yeah. goes. Uh, yeah, I guess. Maybe. Again, it feels like maybe time and place we're losing some context in terms of what the political climate was like at the time. But uh, maybe just a little too smooth, a little too easy. It is still a little bit like... It feels very idealistic. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, you know. Lisa doesn't win either, so maybe yeah. it isn't because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Madison, do you have any other notes about this episode? Any other bits you want to mention? Uh, when they're like on the tour and then, who, oh, who was it? Barbara Bush. I yeah, think. she's in the bathtub and oh. then she's like, give me some privacy and then tell them facts about <laughs> the room or whatever. This bathtub was installed in 17... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They've got their badges, they got a note. Like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, accidental Bush playlist. Oh uh, yeah. Because yeah, at the time of this episode, yeah, it was HW Bush. Mm. Bush, part one. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> so weird to think about how many presidents the Simpsons have seen. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because they even started, like, when they were Tracy Ullmaning, they started in Reagan. Yeah. So they've oh, gone, yeah. yeah, Reagan, Bush, Clinton, Clinton, Bush, Bush, Obama, Trump. <laughs> Obama, Obama, Trump. <laughs> uh, how about you, BT? Any other notes? Oh, my plenty. Phony checks don't usually have exclamation points. <laughs> <laughs> it says, void, 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 Mr. Banker, do not honor. <laughs> Homer's job description it specifically said that he be illiterate. And when to making that note, I misspelled illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's talking to Marge, he's like, if you would like to see me in a costume, <laughs> you have only to ask. <laughs> Oh. Just putting that out there to Simpsons Index listeners, if you'd like to see me in a costume, <laughs> you'd only to ask. Uh, we they... didn't need to ask you while wearing a costume right now. <laughs> yeah, it's my man suit. Um, <laughs> veterans of popular wars show up again. That's always a nice little uh, gag. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, they walk past the limo guy who's got the sign that says Simpson. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, man, it's that guy's got the same last name as us. Yeah. And no one clues on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like the logic behind Homer there is that Someone is standing around with a placard that says their last name on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Marge giggling at the Washington Monument. <laughs> <laughs> and Homer being the one, I'll grow yes, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smutty Marge is my favourite Marge. <laughs> <laughs> dirty, dirty Marge. <laughs> and that is all my notes, other than the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. All right, it's time for my final, final, final notes. So this episode starts and ends with a check. I think that's quite nice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> In the Simpsons menu, you know, we have our sandwich index, but the Simpsons menu index, I'm going to add meatloaf men to that. They <laughs> look delicious. They did. I, I'm a very big meatloaf fan. Mm hmm. Uh, more so the food than the music. I was but... going to say, how do we thread that in here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I like his ambition and his rock and roll opera attitude. But what's but... he up to? Like, Bat Out of Hell 6? <laughs> Even Battier. 
<laughs> and I like how Nelson was like the voice of the fucking, yeah, burn the flag, but you're going to have to burn your pants and TV and fucking that kind of political commentary. Yeah, yeah. Of course that's Nelson. He could have been Rush Limbaugh, but he, he never grew up. Fucking A. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking about Nelson just being on Fox News now. Oh, and it's really fun. Right in. <laughs> He's on Fox News right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They do a little bit of Bart being in the cockpit, which is, yeah, a thing they don't do anymore because... Uh, that, that child could be a terrorist. Well, what? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I mean, it's true, but they don't usually, like, train them that young. Eternal vigilance. <laughs> but, yeah, there's been a couple of incidences, yeah, where children in cockpits have caused, you know... Problems. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're sticky and they touch everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. including that button. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when the pilot is like, it's just like the handles on your tricycle, little boy. <laughs> Homer screaming out, we're all going to die, used to be a meme in our family until our dad said, we probably shouldn't keep shouting this on planes. Because um, <laughs> that did happen once. The things came down from the vent and... Was it me or one of my brothers? I can't remember who said it, but yeah, parents quickly turned to us. Yeah. Shut up! <laughs> I know you're doing the bit, but they, they don't, don't know. Really doing the bit. <laughs> yeah, my dad used to have a friend who um, apparently got a plane grounded because he was flirting with one of the stewardesses and was like, "Yeah, it's a nice day for a hijacking, isn't?" She's like, "Oh, it sure is, sir." Walked off, and <gasps> then oh no, this is like 1970 something because uh, definitely not post 9/11, but still, it uh, they grounded the plane, they got him pulled off, and <laughs> yeah, he was like, "I was just making a joke that I thought the stewardess would like." No. <laughs> He was wrong. <laughs> no, I like like these days at the airport, you do see signs everywhere like, your jokes aren't funny. Don't yeah. make fucking jokes, you <laughs> fucking idiots. <laughs> yep. All we- the Australian signs, listen up, can't stop it. <laughs> <laughs> One of my dad's friend as well, and he, he's like 60 at the mm. time as well. Um, oh. He was bringing in a bow and arrow from a, a, one, a foreign country. and yeah, Canada? As you- Sure, let's go with that one. <laughs> a traditional Canadian bow and arrow. Um, but, you, you know, it was clearly ornamental, and they asked him about it, and it's like, oh, what's this? And he goes, huh, it's a weapon of minor destruction. <sighs> Two hours of customs uh, <sighs> interrogation later. You think they get pissed off about those? Like, oh, God. you had to say that, didn't you? We could have just let you through. If you... No, you had to be on. Fine. <laughs> <sighs> Someone waterboard him. <laughs> <laughs> a five second joke, three hours of paperwork. <laughs> you just uh... worth it though. <laughs> <laughs> totally won the crowd over with that <laughs> zinger. <laughs> and get this, he said, "Weapon of minor destruction." Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> someone give that guy a spin-off series. I would write down all the jokes people say. <laughs> yeah, make a book out of it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. release a very awkward book. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. It'd be way more entertaining than those, like, border security shows. Just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just idiots, like, <laughs> making jokes. <laughs> yeah, just call it, so you think you're fucking funny? <laughs> yeah. I'd watch that. Yeah, it sounds amazing. <laughs> Why are we making so many shows today? I like <laughs> and, yeah, the quickness of how quickly that guy got into jail. He, the newspaper wasn't that he got busted, but now he's a born-again Christian. Like, yeah, good commentary right there. <laughs> yep. And, yeah, I do not hear the word cesspool the same again. Simpsons ruined my brain on that cesspool, one. Cesspool, cesspool, cesspool. But to be fair, it didn't come up a lot. No, it still doesn't. <laughs> BT, it's time to rank this thing. Oh, man. And you're first. My feeling is like all the way from silver to cubic, and I don't know where that lands because it's not a hard laugher, but it's also not the point. But it's all thinky and powerful but it's also i don't think i can cubic despite the fact this is fairly iconic i just don't think it's quite there in terms of its flawlessness so i'm on a gilva and i'm gonna go with gold but i reserve my real right to blurt things out later wow you're there oh okay uh, madison wow um <laughs> i think that's uh, uh. <laughs> so i'm gonna go bronze <laughs> again i feel like i wasn't smart enough to keep up with like the political part of it it was just well, there's so much time that's passed yeah. as well it's yeah i don't yeah. want to think when i'm watching the simpsons like, <laughs> fair, yeah, fair. yeah. <laughs> look I- i'm going silver and i gotta say it's only just i feel i'm even still thinking about going bronze but the problem is like this was a bronze episode where i'm a- when i'm a kid and i feel like it does have a little bit more value now but the problem is it just it doesn't feel excellent to me mm. even in its in- intelligence and all that i'm just i'm giving it a silver and that sort of benefit of the idea that i can enjoy it now more than i was a, than when i was a kid and i'm thinking back to my other silvers and do i want to put this amongst them <sighs> 
because I am right on that border and it's bothering me. <laughs> I usually go with what my part says, but my heart is tin. And it's not, and that's not a metal. Tin's the same color as silver. It's true. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna slide down to the um, silver. I again, I reserve the right to call up Jordan at three a.m. and <laughs> explain the Jordan myself. clause. I think because I so I wouldn't so readily rewatch it. Yeah. That I feel like if I'm going to walk out of this room right now and rewatch it, that's obviously going to be at least a gold. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I do want to go to the library sometime, maybe next month, learn a little bit more about <laughs> American politics in the 80s, then watch this episode and go, huh, deficit rag. <laughs> Silver. Silver. All right. Asterix. <laughs> so, silver asterisks we might still call up jordan at yeah 3 a.m and yep. <laughs> change our minds all right well averaging out this will be a dull silver this is actually the first episode from the classic era to get a dull silver ranking not that we have many dull silvers but we do have in that ranking simpsons bible stories where they do a bunch the of Bible stories. The old <laughs> man and the sea student uh, with springy the springfield spring yeah that's right Helter Shelter, where they do like a reality show where they're in an old-timey house. 24 Minutes, where they do the 24 parody. And The Nedliest Catch, a really cute episode about Ned Flanders and Edna Krabappel getting together. And then they fucking ruin it by asking the internet at the end to vote if they should stay together. Mm. These are things that happened. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so entering it in into the overall season ranking... This might bring it down just a little bit. It's still holding ground at a shiny gold overall for Season 3. Yeah, this is actually dropping a couple of places. Season 3 was our fifth best season, and now it has dropped down to our seventh. Ooh, that's quite a drop. Yeah. <laughs> Seasons 4 and 2 are a bit above it now. So, yeah, that was a bit of a ding. Mm. All right, guys. Well, yeah, that about does it for the Simpsons Index for this week. But before we get out of here, we like to briefly talk about things that we're into lately. Books, TV, film, uh, music, video games. What are other things? Uh, uh, nice drawings in the dirt. Quilts. <laughs> things you find on the street. Newspapers. Just some cool rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Potatoes that are neat. <laughs> BT, what are you into? Um, don't have a lot of hard recommendations here. I've started playing Among the Sleep, which is kind of like a survival horror game where you play as a toddler in like a dream world, but I'm not too sure if I like it yet because I'm only about an hour in. I've watched like an episode of Half and a Half of Nosferatu. I don't love it. So that brings me to Joe Hill, who I kind of like some of his stuff. I actually don't like his books too much, but he does have a graphic novel series called Lock and Key, which is very good. That's lock with an E on the end. Quite good. Check it out. Oh, ah, okay. Yes. And how about you, Madison? What would you like to recommend? Uh, I recently just finished watching Atlanta. Oh, <laughs> yeah, nice. I was a bit slow to get around to that one, but I got there. I've not started, so... Oh, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it, it's another one that's hard for us Aussies to get. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> I think, yeah, the best, most legal way is SBS On Demand. It is on Foxtel. Uh -huh. Like, I for Game of Thrones, I had the subscription yeah. thing yeah. and I forgot to cancel it. So I was like, might as well make use of this last <laughs> month. And Atlanta was on it. So I just yeah. Yeah. watched that all. Which I'm pretty impressed because the last episode's a 30 minute episode. Mm -hmm. And I started watching it at 11 30 p.m. of the night. The next day was like, it was going to expire. And I finished oh. it in time. No. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. Because you had to get like the last two minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my terrible secret is. <laughs> please renew your subscription <laughs> yeah no. well there you go there's another reason for you to hang on to the Foxtel subscription no, no. <laughs> have you cancelled it already no no yeah I'm gonna watch Chernobyl oh, oh nice. yeah I watched that as well it's I've heard that's very good so. oh okay cool yeah if you're um, into that kind of thing I'm into things well yeah see this oh I've got your Foxtel subscription on your on uh, my Playstation I might <laughs> see yeah. if I can quickly sneak that one into it well, I still got it <laughs> but yeah speaking of Foxtel fuck Foxtel mm, fuck uh, Foxtel it's been the bane of our existence trying to do our Game of Thrones podcast. Mm -hmm. BT is hosting our new podcast where we're reviewing Game of Thrones in reverse. Ooh. Yep. Yes. So Ooh, we I just like finished that. season eight and we'll be... Elliot has never seen the show. He's only ever watched it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important key element you've got. Us. So we're, he's currently operating on the theory that this all started because someone talked smack about the Night King's mama. 
Ooh, and that's close. why he's so angry. <laughs> yeah. I've got nothing else to go on right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't confirm or deny. I really can't. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, no, no backward spoilers. Don't tell me what happens in the season one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no backshadowing. <no. laughs> um, so, yeah, that's going to be one of my recommends, obviously, because it's a podcast that we're on, so I like it. And it's fun. <laughs> Check uh, it out. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> So I don't have any solid recommendations either. Uh, I have done a few things like, oh, actually Jordan was around the other day and we played a hell of a lot of Death Squared and we played that with you mm-hmm. before BT as well. That's like a really fun co-op puzzle game. Yep. Involves a lot of talking and communication to solve puzzles yeah. like that. We also played Crawl and I had a lot of fun with that. That's yeah. the, the counter-op dungeon crawler. Yeah. Yeah, where you're kind of working with but against each other. Yeah, it, I enjoyed that one a lot. Yeah. So that's a bit of fun. My friend Pedro, I'll give a soft recommendation to. It's sort of one that I like to dip in and out of. You if know, it's on and, sale, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> but also, I mentioned on the last podcast, I've been rebuilding my N64 collection. And in tandem with that, I've gotten onto another podcast called Ultra 64, mm-hmm. where they're going through and, yeah, reviewing old Nintendo 64 games. They've got a lot of good energy. They have some great guests. And shout out to them as well. I know my shit. Have us on sometime. <laughs> And yeah, me and Hi. PT were kids of N64. Oh yeah, I think that's actually how we initially bonded. <laughs> like pretty much, you, me, Chessel, Shed. Yeah, N64. There's, there's a beautiful thing called uh, male bonding, which you do over GoldenEye 007. Hence the bond. Ah, dun dun dun. All right, cool. Well, yeah, that about does it for us. Let's get out of here. That's been Madison. Oh, I'm supposed to say something. Cool. It's like a <laughs> bye bye. Oh, bye. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for having me, guys. Nailed it. <laughs> and BT, thank Ahoy. you as always. Ahoy. And I've been your host, Elliot J. O'Neill. That's all the mustard in the house. The price of freedom is mustard. Thank you for listening to the Simpsons Index podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can chat to us online at facebook.com slash the Simpsons Index or at Simpsons Index on Twitter and Instagram. And now please stay tuned for the bonus scenes. And just pointing it into the thing. Boop, beep, boop, boop. <laughs> Thanks for. Yeah, it takes a while. Thanks. <laughs> Gotta fill the time. <laughs> this will we'll all get remed- uh, uh, removed in editing, sorry. Oh, why? why? <laughs> 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 so people came here to, came here to hear. Ah, damn homonyms. English is really what we're going to go with. It's a bad language, isn't it? It's a mess. Mm, Rate it a two. (laughs) It gets a participant in the (laughs) panel. The Simpsons actually taught me that drawing a nicely placed Y is a a good drawing of a butt crack. (laughs) (laughs) Change your life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. (laughs) All right. Well, I've just got to compile a couple of other notes. So, BT. The question. Yes. So, we do have a question for our guests. Uh, If you were to have a sandwich named after you, what would be on said sandwich? Oh. If that's too difficult, just what's the best sandwich? You know what? Uh, Just classic. Just some ham. (laughs) Just just ham. Just ham. Just ham. Yeah. Pure ham. But like a lot. (laughs) Okay. A lot of ham. We got got any spreads on there? No. No. Just pure ham. No butter. Nothing. (laughs) Well, meat is the new bread. (laughs) (laughs) There's no bread. No bread. Okay. Just ham. ham, ham, Sauce, veggies. This is the order of it. It would be ham. Yep. And then ham. Okay. (laughs) Are we varying types of ham? I'm sorry. I'm not done. Okay. okay, I'm I'm very sorry. (laughs) Continue. And then ham. Okay. Got it. Yep. Yeah. And then ham. All right. Quad stack. I like it. Yep. Quad ham. <laughs> Damn, that's a good sandwich. Going thinly sliced. Are we going off the bone? What's our ham status? So I want like the outer parts to be thick ham. Like, yep. Yeah. And then the inner parts. Solid chunks. And the inner <laughs> chunks of yes. ham. Yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Not even like even. Exploded pig. <laughs> Just, <Yes>. yeah. <laughs> and then thinly cut in the middle. All right. Yeah. All right. It's direct. I like it. <laughs> Damn, this usually takes people a lot longer. To yeah. <laughs> My idea of it being, it's almost Ron Swanson-esque in the sense of, I would like a ham sandwich, please. <laughs> now, what I'm afraid you heard was I want a sandwich <laughs> with ham on it. What I said was a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs>